What's up, Piglets? Today we're talking about RVing in humid climates. Let's do this. Hey guys, my name's James. And I'm Ashley. Last year we sold our house and we're traveling across the country with our kids. Hi, my name's Goose and this is Maverick. <laughs> Come join us. What's up guys, since we are all on lockdown right now, I figured I would make a good old tips and tricks video, something that we have learned just recently, within the past six months or so of traveling. In the past six months, we have been up in the Pacific Northwest the majority of the time, if not actually all of the time in the past six months, which means we have been here through the entire winter. And let me tell you, the winter in the Pacific Northwest is not the time to RV here. It's relentless, nonstop moisture, whether it be the 80% humidity outside or 100% while it's raining, or it's just the constant cold temperatures. You don't get a break from the moisture. And that is where all of this knowledge is coming from that I really wanted to pass on to you guys. So I'm gonna break today's video up into two sections for you, short-term travels into humid climates and long-term travels in humid climates. And I'm gonna make that designation at about two weeks, maybe three or four weeks for short term, and anything over a month for long term. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Short term trips. So if you are gonna be going to say Florida or Louisiana, anywhere in the south where you have humidity issues, there are a few things you can do there that you can't do say up here in the Pacific Northwest. When you're in those southern states where it warms up during the day, usually your humidity levels drop down at certain times or it's just not constantly gray and rainy like it is up here. I would say in the Pacific Northwest about 80% of the time it's ray, it's gray, rainy, and probably at the 80% humidity mark. But down there when it does drop down below say 30 or 40% humidity, if you open up your windows and just circulate that air as much as possible, that's why you have the fans in your bathroom. That's why you have the fans above the stove. Get all those windows open and just push that air through your rig and that will really help you with your humidity levels. It'll help you with that condensation buildup on your windows because the death of RVs is if you just leave that condensation on your windows, leave that condensation in the backs of your closets, behind your couches on the slide, anything that has direct contact with that cold air outside is where you're gonna have those issues of that condensation buildup, which is why the windows are usually the worst spots in the entire RV, because you have that cold exterior meeting right up against the warm interior, and that moisture from the air just clings onto that glass, very much so like a soda can or whatnot. Speaking of those windows, that is tip number two. At least once a day, if not morning and evening, wipe down those windows, as well as any of those hard surfaces where you notice that condensation buildup. So behind your closet, like I said. Let me actually rewind a minute and let you know why I'm making this video. We had massive issues. For the first month or so when we were up here in the Pacific Northwest, we did pretty much nothing for our RV uh, humidity levels, except for this little tiny humid dehumidifier, which to be honest, up here did basically nothing. So when uh, we did a deep clean about a month into it, we noticed that behind our bed, behind our couch, and a lot of those areas that we didn't wipe down ever, we had mold. And Ashley noticed it in her lungs because she has uh, asthma, and so she's far more susceptible to that kind of thing. So that's, that's what I don't want for you guys. I don't want you guys to not notice that humidity buildup behind the couch or in the backs of your closets because your sleeves will absorb that, absorb that moisture and then get mold and mildew and you'll just have all sorts of issues. Maybe if it isn't your rig, it's not bad enough to cause wood rot, it could cause health issues or just ruin things. We've got mold stains on some of our curtains back there that we didn't notice and I don't want that for you guys. Another short term tip solution is placing towels and rags beneath those susceptible areas. So I know one of our areas that got a lot of condensation build up is the window behind our bed as well as the wall behind our bed. So we rolled up a towel, uh, like a beach towel, and had it laying across the back of our bed. So anytime those drips and that moisture went down between the wipe down sessions morning and night, it would catch those and keep it from getting soaked into the bed or into the wallpaper or into that area where the bed touches the wall and gets mold. Okay, the next tip I have for you guys is a great one that uses no power at all. Uh, there are a lot of uh, manufacturers out there such as Damp Red and other things that make those crystallized beads that absorb moisture and some of them that I really highly recommend are the ones that you can specifically hang up in your closets. Those are amazing because you can set it and forget it and then about a month later depending on how humid it is you can take that out and put in a new one and that isn't going to solve all your problems by 
no means, but it is going to be a great help in trying to keep that closet and other areas that you just don't think about from getting that humidity, that condensation buildup. So whether it be the buckets that you can place here or there, or the hanging ones, any place like that, maybe in your underpass you can stick those just to try and help absorb some of that humidity. Again, these are great short-term solutions. And my last short-term solution for you guys, if you have power, if you can afford to run electric power versus propane, always go with electric because propane furnaces in your RVs produce moisture. It's the air coming in direct contact with that flame that produces moisture. So when you can, use your electric space heaters such as this one we have in our kids room or this one that we have up in our master bedroom or a lot of rigs these days actually have fireplaces built in. So highly recommend using those when you can. Okay, let's move on to some more long-term solutions. For those of you that are gonna be in a humid climate for over two weeks, I highly recommend doing everything we just talked about, but also investing in a dehumidifier. And right now in front of me, I have three different dehumidifiers uh, that we have not only tested, but have used for the past six months, if not the past two years. Our first humidifier we got is this little guy down here, and this is probably the most popular one you see in RVs, because this is great for storage solutions. Really, I think that's the best case scenario, is you can put this in your rig and it will keep that humidity out, that minor humidity out when it's in storage. Or maybe when you're RVing in Florida and whatnot, this just helps pull a little bit of that moisture out. But when you're in an area like the Pacific Northwest where you have 80, 90, 100% humidity, this doesn't, it's like a drop in the bucket. It barely does anything. And that's when we upgraded to this guy, the, the middle of the road level. And we were for sure, oh, okay, the $30 one didn't do it. Let's upgrade to the $60, $70 dehumidifier and that will help us out. And it did a little bit more. I'm not gonna lie, this, this isn't bad. I would probably actually get this one over one of these ones because realistically, this little guy, I wouldn't even waste your money on it. I don't think it's worth it. I would get one of these mid-grade ones if you're gonna buy any sort of dehumidifier. And this one is probably the solution you want for going to Florida, going to Louisiana, anywhere of those southern states that have that humidity. This dehumidifier will probably do twice as much as that ever dry humidifier that you see all over the place. Uh, and granted, it is more expensive instead of 30 or 40 bucks. It's, like I said, around $70. But uh, if you're gonna invest that money, I just advise you investing in something that will actually do something for you. Uh, but if you want a long-term solution, if you don't want that condensation build up on your windows in the morning, if you don't want to have to worry about black mold or mildew coming behind your couches, I suggest investing in something like this, which is a full-size dehumidifier. I believe this is capable of dehumidifying up to 1,500 square feet. And since we're at about 300, 400 square feet, we are more than sufficient. And let me tell you, when we bought this, it made a world of difference. We went from having to wipe down our windows every morning and every evening and having all those condensation problems like I was telling you about to it being bone dry. We no longer have to wipe down our windows. We no longer have that condensation build up behind the couches in our cabinets or anything like that. Oh, that's a tip I forgot to mention earlier. Another thing you can do to help that airflow is at night maybe open up your uh, cupboard doors. Opening those up will allow that airflow and help prevent uh, condensation build up. But we don't have to worry about that anymore because of this dehumidifier it made a world of difference. We went from basically wiping down constantly to hardly having to wipe anything down at all. Now granted, if we're cooking, such as boiling water, or you know, putting things in the oven, or maybe we're just all in the same room, when you get four or five bodies in one room, you're gonna get some condensation buildup. But in general, this thing takes care of all of those issues. I no longer have any worry or fret about getting any sort of mold or mildew issues. And we would wake up in the mornings, and not only behind the beds and behind the couches and in the closet, but the highest susceptibility areas, those windows, which you can never get rid of the condensation on, were bone dry. This thing was amazing. Now, I'm not saying that you have to buy this specific brand. This is just the only one that I can recommend that we have done. And I understand that some of you are boondocking or maybe you just don't have the power resources to have a dehumidifier like this running 24 seven, which is what we did. We had this thing going constantly and we were emptying the bucket out once or twice a day, which is an insane amount of water to pull out of the air. Maybe if you can't, do that, get one of the smaller ones or just run it maybe for an hour or two a day or just do all of the other tips and tricks I told you to try and help prevent that. But my number one recommendation is splurging, saving up the money if you can because it'll save you money in the long run and buying one of these larger dehumidifiers because it will save you hundreds if not thousands of dollars in damage, in medical bills, in sheets getting ruined, your clothes absorbing that moisture. getting 
everything. Basically your entire trailer can be destroyed if you don't control that humidity, that condensation levels. One of the things I suggest getting if you're gonna be traveling to humid climates, whether it be short term or long term, is getting a uh, humidity gauge. Uh, it really helps you know what you're at and uh, if what you're doing is working. Because for the longest time, we thought that that little tiny humidifier was doing its job and it just wasn't. By the way, can you tell we just filmed the raining scene? Anyways, um, the gauge will let you know if you have sufficient uh, control over your humidity. So the goal is to get down below 40%, I would say. Anything above 40% and you're gonna start to get that buildup on your windows and whatnot. And the lower you can get, the better. If you can get down into the 20s, that's amazing. Right? Just for reference, in drier climates like the uh, Central Oregon Desert or probably in Arizona and whatnot, you're gonna be down at like 10%, maybe 15% humidity. So you're really dry. So if you can get into the 20s, or 30s, you don't really have to worry too much about rot and mold and whatnot. But if you're getting into the 40s, 50s, or even up into the 60s, you're definitely gonna get that massive amounts of condensation build up. And if that happens long term, risk things like mold and mildew and whatnot. <laughs> Are you getting me? <laughs> Put it back up in the air. Straight up, not straight up. He's straight up. You are covered. What's up guys? Today we're talking about RVing in humid climates. Let's do this. Well, that's gonna do it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you got some tips and some tricks out of this. Let me know down below in the comments, what do you do to help prevent humidity or what have you seen others do that maybe I forgot to touch on? Leave me a comment down below and just let me know what you would like to see next. I am hoping to make some more of these tips and trick tutorial videos while we're in lockdown here in Central Oregon. I hope you are staying safe. I hope you are finding a way to get out there and have some fun. Because remember guys, life is an adventure. Stay positive. Get out there when you can and make some memories.